see behind me Ronald Reagan National Airport, which is a international airport, and I'm getting ready to take a flight. It's a long distance flight. And if you've ever done the same, you've probably noticed that the map that they show on the airplane shows a curved line. Why would that be the case? Well, it turns out that if you are living on a spherical Earth, which we are, then uh, the straightest distance between any two points over a far path is what's known as a great circle. So we've got two positions here on this Earth, this spherical Earth, and they happen to be at the same latitude. It doesn't, it doesn't matter what your latitude is, but it's good to illustrate. So let's measure the distance in a straight line along that line of latitude, and I get about 21 units. It's inches in this case, but it could be anything. It doesn't matter. 21, all right? And then if we trace the curved path, the curved path, you're going to get a different value. In this case, I get around 20 units. So I saved about one out of 20 units in that case. But what's really interesting is if you kind of turn the world in a different way and line it up so you're looking at one departure point, trace that point to its finish point, and you can kind of see why the Great Circle is the quickest route over a spherical Earth. So if we were to interrelate kind of the latitudes and longitudes of our origin and our destination for any type of great circle problem, it might look something like this. For example, position one has a latitude and a longitude. Likewise, position two has a latitude and a longitude. And if you know just those two pieces of information, one for each uh, latitude and longitude, you can set up a spherical triangle with the elevated pole um, and deducing the difference in longitude between them. And then in Bowditch, volume two, there's a formula to calculate the distance between any two points using that information. The formula is the cosine of distance is equal to the sine of the first latitude times the sine of the second latitude, plus the cosine of the first latitude times the cosine of the second latitude times the cosine of the difference in longitude. So if you know the two positions, you can deduce the difference in longitude. Just kind of plug these values in and you can get your, your distance that way. Important to note that these uh, latitudes and longitudes need to be in decimal degrees. So if you're not familiar with converting to decimal degrees, it's usually either multiplying or dividing by 60, depending on which way you're going. But if you can kind of plug and chug into this formula, you can calculate the distance between any two points on the Earth given their latitudes and longitudes and their difference in longitudes. This is a similar um, exercise to Coast Guard exam problems at the, the oceans level. Uh, it's one of many of what's known as the sailings. And in Bowditch, there's a chapter on the sailings with all the different formulas. So as an example of this great circle sailings problem in calculating distance, let's calculate the distance between say Tuscaloosa, Alabama and Madrid, Spain. Maybe you were taking a flight between them. I don't think there's any airlines that fly directly between them. But uh, what would be the distance between these two points? Well, we know the latitude and the longitude of these. And so for, um, for Tuscaloosa, Alabama, the latitude is 33 degrees, 33.205 degrees north. And the longitude is 87 degrees, 87.659 degrees west. Likewise for Madrid, Spain, the latitude is 36.776 degrees north and the longitude is 6.353. Right, so we've got the latitude of Tuscaloosa, Alabama, the, long, the latitude and longitude of Madrid, Spain as well, um, and we can plug those into the calculator to figure out what the distance between those two points is. Very important to know this DLO, this difference in longitude, is really just the difference between 87.659 and 6.353. And that distance or difference in longitude, if you just do that math out, is going to be um, 81.306 degrees, right? And so you should have everything that you need to plug into the formula. So I'll, I'll speed through this um, on the camera, we'll, we'll fast forward and we'll get to an answer and we'll see how that relates to what's known as the Alabama stone. We'll leave you hanging for just a minute.
All right, and then what we do at the very end is we multiply the, uh, the value that we get for distance, which is in degrees, 64.58 degrees times 60 miles per degree. And that gives us our distance of 3,875 nautical miles. So you can do that in many ways. You don't have to do the formula from Bowditch, although if you are taking a Coast Guard exam, you will have to do that. Um, you can use web apps um, all over Google. You can search for Great Circle Calculator and find many good ones. Um, to get that same kind of distance. And you might get a slightly different version than me, depending on how I rounded or if I maybe typed into my calculator a different way than you did, but in the vicinity of 3,875 nautical miles. Um, if you do get a slightly different answer, don't worry about it, all good. Okay, so what does that have to do with the Alabama stone? Well, it turns out I got a note from a friend in Alabama and they found this stone um, and it had been there a long time and it had some words from in Spanish on it and it had the number 1232 on it. And there was some thought that this stone maybe had been placed in Tuscaloosa, Alabama in the year 1232, which would really upset the apple cart as far as the historical um, exploration from Europeans, um, the timeline for it. Well, uh, this person that I talked to, Ken Willis in Alabama, had uh, also hypothesized that maybe it was a distance. Maybe it was a distance. So 1232 is not 3,875. But there is a cool little connection in that um, the Spanish League, the Spanish League. So if you've heard of the word league before, you know, it's a measure of distance. And the traditional Spanish League in this time frame was about 3.187 nautical miles. Give or take. I'm not a historian, right? I'm not a historian. But if you take 3875 divided by 3.187, you get 1215, which is pretty darn close to 1232. So within the, the bounds of uh, measuring at the time, you know, maybe the hypothesis is that this number, which was on the Alabama stone, 1232, represented the number of Spanish leagues back to Madrid or some you know, hometown in Spain, if you give or take a little bit. So kind of a cool application of this great circle problem I don't know if that's uh, the, you know, the truth behind it. I think it's still a mystery, but um, you know, Ken Willis, if you're watching, thanks for uh, providing the, the interesting challenge. And I hope that this video shows you a little bit about what a great circle is, as well as how to solve them for Coast Guard problems. By knowing the latitude and longitude of the two points, you can get the distance between them. And then maybe a fun application of, uh, of a mystery regarding the Alabama stone. Thanks for watching.